PodGo Wireless is almost exactly like PodGo, except it has a wireless receiver built in and ships with a G10T2 transmitter. You can also use G10T transmitters like the one I have here. Every time you move PodGo into another room or play a different venue, make sure you connect the transmitter to the guitar in jack even if it's fully charged. You'll briefly see a sync icon, which means PodGo Wireless is finding the best wireless channel. Once that's done, it starts charging. Plug the transmitter into your guitar and you'll see both battery and radio quality icons. For the best wireless performance and longest range, make sure nothing's covering the antenna above the expression pedal. Try to face PodGo Wireless if possible, as your body can sometimes block wireless signals, and try to stay away from wireless routers. On the input block, you'll notice that although all presets are set to receive both guitar in and wireless signals simultaneously by default, you can choose just guitar in or just wireless, so you can use it as an input switcher. Press both page buttons to open the menu and press global settings. Turn the upper knob to select wireless. Leave RF channel set to auto unless you really need to select a specific channel. Wireless audio can sometimes sound too pristine, so cable tone emulates the natural high-end roll-off of 10 or 30-foot cables. Wireless gain lets you match the level of your wired guitars. Whenever you're done playing and turn PodGo wireless off, it's best to keep the transmitter in the storage well. If it's connected to your guitar or the guitar in, it can slowly lose its charge over a week or so. But when left in the storage well, the G10T2 can stay charged for over a month. 